It's team time. It's team time. It's team time. Hey, hey, hey. It's team time. It's team time. It's team time. Hey, hey, hey. To be or not to be. <laughs> that is the question. question. Steam scholars, meet my friend Busy. She is a worker bee. What is a worker bee, you ask? Don't worry. This unit is all about bees. Let's get down to beesness. To begin, we will start by going over the design process, followed by saying what STEAM stands for. The design process is something we, as engineers and scientists, will use every time we create or do an experiment. Feel free to say each step with me. With any project, we are going to A, ask, what is the problem or what am I trying to create or solve? B, brainstorm, how can I solve or make what I am trying to create? C, collect, collect information, data, or use prior knowledge to help create. D, develop, start creating your project. E, evaluate, what works, what doesn't work, and what can I do to make it better? F, fine tune, I will try again until my design is where I want it to be. STEAM stands for science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Great job. My favorite time, it is student question box time where we want to hear from you. Today, we have a question, let's see. Oh, oh wow. Okay, I have a lot of questions in here. We are going to, we have questions from, looks like two from Stanley Hutfield and one from Esperanza. The Stanley Hutfield question reads, how do bees get nectar from flowers? And how do bees make nectar? Do they make it in flowers? And our question from Esperanza reads, how do bees sting you? Do they pinch you? Oh, I love these questions. Remember, throughout both of these video units, we will answer your questions. So great questions, and thank you for asking. Oh, hi, Miss Wilson. <laughs> hi, Busy. I was wondering if you could help us understand more about bees and how bees get nectar and pollen from flowers. Of course. We see them outside, near our homes, parks, and schools. They are black and yellow in color and are often seen as mean insects because they sting. However, bees are so much more special than we know. Let's explore. There are around 20,000 known species or types of bees. The most common and the ones we will explore today are the honeybee and bumblebee. What do you think is the difference between bumblebees and honeybees. How do you think they look different? Take some time to discuss with your class. Wow, you guys are buzzing me away with your knowledge. Great job. Bumblebees are round and fluffy in appearance, whereas honeybees are smaller and thinner. You can clearly see the distinction or difference from their head and body. Honeybees have five eyes and two sets of wings, whereas bumblebees, their head and their body look like one piece. If you like to socialize or talk or be around people, you may fit right in with honeybees. Honeybees are known as social insects. They live in colonies most colonies have 20,000 to 60,000 bees and one queen bee in a hive. A beehive is where the bees live that is made from beeswax. Each colony has a set of worker bees and drone bees. Can you guess what worker bees do and what drone bees do? Take time to discuss with your class now. Drone bees. 
They are the male or boy bees whose primary job is to take care and protect the queen bee. The drone bee does not have a stinger. Only the queen bee and worker bees have a stinger. But don't be afraid. Bees only sting when they are protecting themselves or their hives. Bees are our friends. Did you know that bees are the only insect in the world that make food that people eat? More specifically, the bees that make the tasty food we eat are known as worker bees. Worker bees are female or girl bees that get food for the hive, take care of larvae, make wax, build honeycombs, clean the hive, and gather pollen and nectar. Pollen is a fine powder produced by certain plants. Nectar is the sweet substance that is made by some plants, so they attract pollinators. Pollinators are animals or insects that help move pollen from one plant to the next to make seeds. Bees are pollinators and they use nectar to make honey. Now that you know, challenge time. Did you know that bees have great color vision? In fact, they are especially attracted to or drawn to brightly colored flowers. Can you guess what colors bees are attracted to? Take some time to discuss with your class now. Bees usually go to flowers that are yellow, blue, purple, and white. If you guess any of those colors, round of applause. So for this challenge, we are going to explore the A in STEAM, which is art. And we are going to create our own still life painting. Still life paintings are paintings of objects that don't move. Today, we are going to create our own version of the flowers that bees are attracted to. For this project, you will need flowers, a vase, paint palettes, an extra paintbrush, a plastic cup, water, and white paper, as well as tablecloths. So step one, take some time to observe and talk with your group about the flowers in front of you. What do you notice about the flowers? What part of the flower do you think bees go to on the flower to get food? And what colors do you notice in the flowers? Two, take out your piece of paper and paint set. Step three, start painting a still life painting of the flower and vase in front of you. This can be as realistic or as abstract as you like. Realistic paintings, known as realism, is the true representation of what the object you are painting looks like. Abstract art is not the true representation of the object you're painting. Instead, it uses some of the elements of art, shape, form, and color to give the idea of the real object. To add to your still life painting, add a bee to your flower where you think the bee may land. Remember, there isn't a right or wrong way to paint your still life painting. It's your creation, so be creative.
All right, here is my abstract version of a flower, the sunflowers. Steam scholars, we gained a lot of buzzworthy knowledge about our friend the bee. Thanks to Busy, we learned that there are 20,000 known species or types of bees. The ones we explore today were the honeybee and the bumblebee. We learned that bees are pollinators and they are the only insects that make food that we eat. Today, we created our own still life painting, paintings of objects that don't move. Some of us made realism. That is art that is true to the representation. Paintings just like artist Amy Sherrill. And some of us made abstract art. Art that is not true to the representation, like Pablo Picasso, of flowers that bees are attracted to because of their bright colors, which are yellow, blue, purple, and white. Next week, we will explore more about how bees pollinate. Throughout this week, take time to think about how bees are able to carry pollen. If you were a bee, how would you carry pollen? Remember to write any new questions or thoughts you have in your design process notebooks. Look over your STEAM career cards. Would you be a wildlife conservationist, a beekeeper, or maybe pursue a career in horticulture or botany? Until next time, my STEAM scholars, be great and keep exploring. Bye-bye.